I've just purchased 64 US dollars worth of e-waste phones online. What have I received for my money? Does any of it actually work or is worth fixing? Let's find out. There are 16 phones in total, which works out to just 4 US dollars a phone, or $6.25 Australian. There's quite a variety of phones in both age and brand. We have a few iPhones, Google Pixels, lots of Samsung, a ZTE and two Huawei's. It appears most of these phones have already been through some sort of e-waste facility, given the severity of the scratches visible on many of the phones. Let's firstly see what powers on and the faults each phone might have before we begin repairing anything. The first phone out of the bunch is this Galaxy S10. Cracked on both sides, it's seen better days, but it may be a phone worth fixing. When plugged in, it draws a normal amount of current and the screen lights up even when the OLED is completely destroyed. Next is a Google Pixel 6a. This has to be one of the most scratched phones I've ever seen. The housing is badly damaged, even so far as to be bent. When connected to power, this display doesn't light up, but the phone vibrates, which indicates it is powering on. The second Samsung is a Galaxy S9 Plus. In a similar condition to the previous phones, it lights up straight away when plugged in and has a mostly working screen. Not only did the previous owner not wipe the phone, but they disabled the lock screen, meaning the phone boots straight to the home screen. A slightly older Samsung is this Galaxy Note 8. It's badly smashed on both sides, the cameras are damaged, and it's missing the S Pen. It draws the expected amount of current from the charger, but the screen doesn't light up. Making matters more difficult, the power button is missing. Using some tweezers, I could reach in and press the button. While the screen didn't light up, the phone did in fact boot, as can be seen by the status light in the top left. Stepping out of Samsung's flagship line, we have our next phone, the Galaxy A13. Its plastic back is badly scratched, has two broken camera lenses and a broken LCD screen. Keeping on the trend of Galaxy A series phones, this is an A20. It proves to be the first of this lot not to power on at all. It draws an abnormal amount of current. Our next phone is another Google Pixel, this time a Pixel 3. I've fixed too many of these. I honestly just can't stand trying to repair them, so I can tell you already, I'm not fixing another one of these. The charge port is so full of dirt, the charger won't connect. However, it had a small amount of remaining charge. What I wasn't expecting to see was a warning about booting into a different operating system. Graphene OS, based on Android 12. What's even weirder is the lack of really anything on this phone, with the exception of two apps and an active SIM card. I don't know if there's any credit on the SIM, but it's an old card because it's been cut down from a much larger SIM. At first, I thought this might have been a phone used for app development, however, one of the two installed apps hints at a different use case. Wasted is an app that lets you wipe an Android phone, either using a panic button, by entering a password, when a fake messenger app is launched, or the device is not unlocked for a certain time. Auditor, the other app installed, is an app by Graphene OS for validating the integrity of the OS. It may be installed by Graphene OS by default, but I didn't recognize it myself. A Galaxy A12 was next. Like the Note 8, this phone has a totally dead display, but powers on and makes charging sounds. Proceeding is our only 5G phone of the lot, this Vio Y55 5G. But don't let the 5G branding fool you, this isn't a high-end device. Have a look at that third camera, it looks like it's been hacked in. Like a few of the other phones, the charge port was filled with dirt, but not enough to stop us from quickly charging it up. The LCD on this phone is smashed beyond recognition, with only this small section of the screen visible. Hey look, it's a Motorola G8 Plus. I wasn't expecting to see this phone. It's the best phone cosmetically in this lot. The screen is almost flawless. No, I take that back. The LCD is cracked. What a shame. I had the odd feeling that before I even plugged in this Galaxy S7, that it wouldn't boot. 
I have come across so many now that I'd say it's a design flaw with this model. It draws no current whatsoever unless the power button is depressed, when it draws just a microscopical amount. My guess, a dead CPU or something similar. The next two are very similar Huawei phones, both with the exact same issue, a cracked screen. These would likely be the oldest phones of the bunch and are not only not economical to fix, but I doubt if they would even work on Australian networks after the shutdown of 3G and the government ban on phones not officially supporting voice over LTE. The same would also apply to this unknown ZTE phone, the only phone not to have a damaged screen. It was likely only thrown away after being booted off Australian networks. And if you use a screen protector like this phone has, make sure to replace it every year or this could happen when you try and replace it. The glue has set rock solid. Once the screen protector is removed and the phone reset, it's now in working condition. With settings reporting this as being a ZTE Blitz, but also a ZTE Blade, so take that as you will. The last two phones are probably the least eventful, not because they're iPhone 6s, but because they're both iCloud locked with one having a dead screen. Of course, the only issue with charging up all these phones is that one of course has to have an alarm set, and I don't know what phone it is. And if it's got a dead screen, I can't stop it anyway. I've ordered some parts to fix a few of the phones we've just looked at. There were some old and frankly junk phones in this lot, but there's a few that stood out as being good candidates to be fixed. The first and oldest phone we'll be fixing is this Galaxy S9 Plus, one of Samsung's most reliable phones. Despite its age, it's still new enough to run current apps, take decent photos and remain perfectly usable for a few more years. Because this phone is still in a mostly operational condition, we can test it for any further faults using my application iTest, available for both Android and iOS. We don't want to invest money into a device with major faults, so it's important to test all hardware functions before we begin. Running a colour in burn-in test, we can see the old screen has a permanent mark, some burn-in of the navigation buttons and a line running down the right-hand side. Despite this, the touch portion of the screen is working well. If the old screen has a good OLED panel and just broken glass, we could have sold the screen to a refurbishing company to recoup some money. But with no other faults found, it's time this S9 Plus got a new display, battery and back glass. After being heated on a heat plate for a few minutes, I can begin prying open the back. When choosing devices to repair out of this lot, I picked phones that would be able to be repaired for under their resale value, meaning when I sell them, I'll be making at least a bit of profit. While a lot of phones in this lot could have been fixed, it's a matter of cost and time involved that will ultimately make the decision. It wouldn't make any sense spending $150 fixing a $50 phone, unless it was for data recovery or sentimental reasons. That being said, I think I've picked the best of this bunch. For our S9 Plus, it's the case of removing all the working components ready to be transplanted into a new display assembly. It doesn't look as though this phone has been repaired previously, so all these parts should be the original ones that this phone shipped with from the factory. The replacement display I have here is a refurbished screen, meaning someone has sold their display with broken glass and a company has replaced the outer glass, making this screen as close to original without having to purchase a more expensive original screen. I'll get the components we removed earlier installed into this new frame. As it's the oldest phone we'll be fixing today, I thought it deserves a new battery. This genuine Samsung replacement will replace the original factory shipping battery that was found in this phone. Before I seal up each phone, I'll test it again with eye test to ensure the new display is working as expected and is without any screen burn in. With that, the back panel of this Galaxy S9 Plus can be secured into place. Then the two plastic films can be removed from the phone.
The next phone we'll attempt to repair is this Google Pixel 6a. Unlike the Galaxy S9 Plus, it opens screen first, which will make it easier for us to test if a new display will get this phone working again. I'll use a Jimmy tool and a few picks to get the display separated and disconnect its bracket using the edge of my tweezers. Once unplugged, a new display can be fitted to test the phone. With the press of the power button, this Pixel is booting up. It's already been reset, a good effort from the previous owner considering the display didn't work at all. So the phone works, but cosmetically, it's a disaster. I had ordered a new back panel, but that doesn't include the frame, which is bent and chipped. I want to spend some time to finding a better solution than just throwing a new display onto it. Should I try and straighten the frame and sand off all the black, or try and repaint it? I haven't decided, so I won't be fixing this one today, but I will for sure when I decide how to approach all this damage. I have a bit of a soft spot for the Galaxy S10. I believe it to be the peak of Samsung phones. You had an edge-to-edge -edge screen, a great design, good specs, and a headphone jack. Newer Samsungs are still good, but I feel they just don't have the same impact as the S10 did, and the colors of the S8 through S10 were just stunning. This one has been worked on before. The back panel and frame are a different color. There is two missing screws and generic adhesive has been used to hold the back panel on. As the camera lens has been cracked and evidence of dirt entering the cameras can be seen, I'll be replacing the camera assembly. You just can't clean phone cameras. Once they come into contact with dirt, they scratch and fog up. A replacement is under $10. Removal of the motherboard requires the SIM tray to be removed but it's jammed. I've seen a few stubborn SIM trays on Samsung's before, but nothing like this one. It just won't come out. In the end, I pried it out using the Jimmy tool. I was expecting a SIM card to be the culprit, but the tray was empty. After removing the motherboard, I can launch the headphone jack into space before removing the battery. Using alcohol to remove the vibration motor not only helps it come free, but once dry, the adhesive will regain its adhesion, ready for reuse. Before the motherboard can be installed, I'll need to install the cameras, which attach from the back side of the board, the cameras being adhered into place. Now it's a matter of getting this phone back into one piece. While testing the phone, I ran into an issue. The volume button is falling out of the frame. I've never seen this happen before, but I have to find a way to fix it. I removed the left side of the rubber membrane and reattached it to the button using glue. Once dry, it could be pressed back into the frame. Fixed. Now all that's left to do is attach the back glass. The last phone I'll be repairing is this 2022 model Samsung Galaxy A13. It resembles a Galaxy S22, but is from their cheaper lineup of phones. While this phone opens from the back like the other Samsung phones we've repaired today, this one has a plastic back, which is clipped into place, so it doesn't need heat to remove. I can therefore use a Jimmy tool and plastic picks to separate the two halves. Inside, it's similar to the flagship Samsung phones, although you can tell it's manufactured to a lower cost. It's even a similar process for the screen replacement. There is some pretty gross gunk around the charge port that I'll need to clean up before reinstalling it into the new frame. This phone by far has the strongest battery adhesive out of all the phones we've repaired today. This could be because of the age of the adhesive or that Samsung appears to be using much more adhesive than previous models. But with some persistence and lots of alcohol, I was able to free the battery. The fingerprint power button needs to have its retention bracket carefully removed with the assembly being transferred to the new back housing. 
Unpacking our new display assembly, I can get all the components we've just removed installed into the new frame. Once the components have been transferred across, it's time to close up the phone. I'll start by clipping the side with the buttons in first to ensure they're working and not jammed by the housing before clipping the remaining sections in. With the new screen, we can now see the phone boot to the lock screen where it's locked with a pattern code. It took a few tries, but I guess the pattern, which happens quite a bit with these phones as people tend to use simple patterns. At least it makes resetting the phone easier. Lastly, the protective films can be removed from the new display and back panel. And we're done. So this is it. A lot of 16 eways phones, some repaired and ready to be reused, others just parts phones, and a few actually e-waste. I'm always happy to keep a few phones out of the waste stream and back into someone's hands. We've managed to fix three phones today with a fourth soon to be repaired. There was another four with working screens that I didn't think were worth fixing myself. Two totally dead phones and the rest just having dead displays. The profit margins on the repaired phones won't be massive at about 50 to 75 Australian dollars, but I might be able to sell some of the phones I didn't want to fix to help improve that profit margin. If you're looking to do something similar yourself, remember it can be easy to get hooked on the per phone price without realizing the cost of replacement parts. And on that note, this has been Hugh Jeffries' video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Phone Lot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.